Sean McCabe. Welcome to the show. Hey, welcome to the John A. McCabe Show, where it's all about accelerating your authority in your business or field of expertise. And I do that by helping entrepreneurs, business owners, authors, experts, and speakers get seen, get heard, get noticed on any device, anywhere, anytime, in as little as 15 hours, also known as the Authority Acceleration Blueprint. Now, on today's show, Business Strategy Tuesday, we're going to get into the business of writing, publishing, and launching a book. One of the fastest ways to accelerate your authority is to become a best-selling author. For many, that's a daunting task just to think about, let alone make a reality. There are so many aspects that go into launching a book from the idea, determining the audience, uh, what you have to say, and what is the best way to convey your message or your story. For so many of us, the biggest hurdle is that we aren't writers, let alone authors or editors. So what does it take? Well, today I'm going to be joined by Joe Bavino and his client, Kelly Barber Conate. Uh, today, the we're launching Kelly's book, The Grieving Parent Club, which is being released on her daughter Lexi's 27th birthday. Uh, I'm going to get into uh, what it took from start to finish to complete the project and what kinds of launch strategies that they're using to get the book to the number one bestseller. Now, Joe Bavino is the founder and CEO of Bestseller and You Publishing, an attorney with over 25 years of experience and the, Amazon, uh, the author of four Amazon number one bestselling books on dating and relationships. Now, he spends, spent most of his life in New Jersey, Los Angeles, and Miami, but currently resides in Columbia. Now, Joe resigned from his law job and decided to write a book. Now he has four number one bestsellers, and he'd like to help others who have a great uh, book, a bestseller in them. Uh, it's not just about achieving bestseller st status and because in some ways that's easy now. It's about being the best that you can be and sharing it with others. And arguably the best way to share one's wisdom, wit, and great ideas with the world is through a book. However, Joe has discovered many people are confused and frustrated with the publishing process. They doubt their own ability to write well and publish a great book. And they think the writing and publishing process is rigged for celebrities and well-connected. Now Joe helps people with a three-step process that gets their uh, book out of their head and into the world of non in, in a non-traditional way that works. First, he positions, structures, and outlines the book. Second, they speak the book into existence. And third, he launches it to bestseller status with a goal of making it a number one bestseller. Now today we're going to learn more about the strategy, not only from Joe himself, but from one of his clients who just went through the process. So don't go away because when I return, I'm going to be joined by my guests today, Joe Bavino and Kelly Barber Connerte. Hey, thanks for joining me on today's show, Business Strategy Tuesday, where we discuss various strategies that will accelerate your authority in your business, while at the same time positioning you as the expert or the authority in your field of expertise. Today, we're going to discuss one of the fastest ways you can accelerate your authority, become a best-selling author. We'll get into the business behind what it takes to make that happen by talking with a four-time number one best-selling author and publisher, Joe Bavino, as well as his client, Kelly Barber, Connor Tay, I keep <laughs> tripping over that name, Connor Tay, who just launched her book, The Grieving Parents Club, uh, first thing this morning. And uh, earlier today, we spent a few hours online launching Kelly's book on a live cast where we talked about the book itself, why Kelly wrote it, what her goal is with the book, and much more. But now we're going to talk, uh, talk about and get into the process that she went through with the help of Joe Bavino. Now, Joe has been a guest on the show before and is no stranger to the publishing world. So please give it up with likes, love, shares, and a virtual flurry of thumbs up and heart icons across the screen for my guests today, Joe and Kelly. Welcome, guys. Hey. Thanks, John. It's uh, great seeing you again. It's been all of, what, uh, one hour? Yeah. <laughs> Time for this. So, yeah. So thanks for joining me on the show. And... Uh, for those who missed the live cast earlier this morning, we, we talked about Kelly's book, uh, her purpose behind the book. And this show is all going to be all about the business, all about the strategy, all about how uh, Kelly was able to, as I just heard from Joe before we launched, uh, is actually now a number one best-selling author. How that actually happened from start to finish uh, during the show. So, um, so before we get into too much, um, 
<laughs> see, I'm just kind of lost here because normally I do my speed round of questions, and uh, I had didn't have a whole lot of time to prepare for today's show. But uh, we know the topic quite well. Um, I know the topic quite well. Joe knows the topic, and Kelly's been through the process. So uh, let's uh, let's dig right into it and uh, start with. Um, the very beginning, Joe, uh, when Kelly uh, approached you uh, to to do a book, and uh, just sort of what are your initial what's your initial process before you actually get into uh, you know taking them through your three step program? What is the initial like client meeting like? Uh, what ty- types of things are you trying to to get out of the client, and uh, to determine one if you actually want to take on the project? Right. I think the first thing is to see if they're a good fit for my process and really if they should be writing a book at all. Whoever comes to me wanting to talk about uh, their idea for a book. I really never want to just, frankly, I don't like to discourage anyone from writing. If they want to write a book, I think they should do it. But in terms of whether they they should work with me, that's a different thing. Uh, The first thing I look for is a real passion for the subject matter, whatever it is. Uh, it really doesn't matter what it is as long as there's the passion is there and the love for the subject uh, this is a good example of the difference is like I wrote my books I'm, I'm a lawyer and, and I have this business bestseller new but I wrote books on dating relationships because I happen to love that subject and culture and all that Kelly came with a completely different uh, subject matter um, uh, gr- grieving parents and how grieving parents can survive cope and heal so but so I look, and she really had a, a passion for the subject because she had such experience in it, and she she had these stories, and she really wanted to tell, and she felt she could help. She was she was helping a lot of other people anyway, directly, and this was a, a book was a way to reach more people with what she, with her message. So there was no problem there with the with the passion and a love for the subject, even though it was a rough one and totally different than my own. Uh, the next thing was I looked for expertise. In a nonfiction book of any kind, this was going to be a nonfiction book, not a, not a memoir. We decided that early on too. That's important to decide what your book's going to be. But it was going to be a, a nonfiction book. Uh, the person who's writing it has to have some expertise in the subject matter. Mm-hmm. And expertise is it's an unusual word to use in the context of you know grieving parents and grief. But the truth is that you know Kelly had plenty of expertise. She lived it. And really, the only people, the real experts, are the ones who have lived it. And she lived it for all, almost 10 years. When she came to me. So, but once we'd established that, I think the next the next thing we needed to do was okay. Yeah, I, I alluded to this, but like, what kind of a book was it going to be? Was it really just going to be a story, a memoir of you and your daughter, or were you going to be, uh, in a way, um, guiding other grieving parents? And it was pretty. We pretty quickly came to the conclusion that she wanted to be a guide. She didn't have all the answers ever claimed to be. She's not. She's very humble, but uh, but she has a lot of insight. And uh, so that's how we set it up. We set up the reader as the, the the person who would come to her book as a new reader, probably a grieving parent or somebody who's concerned about the subject, uh, and, and with a real problem. They come in really concerned, and to try to help them along in their journey, and make sure they're not alone, and to give them some guidance. Uh, to really help them to, uh, as we say, survive, cope, and heal. So that was, that's where we started. John, I'll just say, once we got that far, I'm jumping ahead a little bit, I guess, but once we got that far, and then it was a matter of structuring the book and the story, and that was a different, that that took us some time. Uh, I'm just going to jump in and ask Kelly a couple of questions then. So Kelly, um, first, uh, what is it that you... uh, why is it that you wanted to write the book? And two, did you have any apprehensions of actually the process or, or becoming an author? Or uh, how did, did you, you know, was there any hesitations of, I don't even know where to start or what to do? So can you walk us through sort of that, the process that was going through your mind when you made the decision, I think I want to be an author, but uh, so what did you do? Uh, oh, wow, yeah. I I had all these stories, um, it, and it's something that that you know I I have a story to tell. I have ideas. I have things that could help other people. Um, 
but they would just stay in kind of that idea stage, bouncing around in my head. And um, again, it wasn't really until I was getting, you know, preparing for to what to me was kind of a milestone number 10 years and thinking about um, just hearing on the news, um, you know, um, young people dying, being killed and stuff. And it's just like, you know, I, I really, my heart breaks for them every time I hear the story because I know exactly um, how they're, how they're feeling. And I, you know, I really wish I could help them. And, and I thought, well, you know, what can I do? And, and, you know, I guess you say, well, let's write a book. Um, personally, I, um, I had just finished, um, a couple of years of writing my doctoral dissertation. And the last thing I wanted to do was write, <laughs> uh, just, uh, APA um, is going to give me a heart attack. Yeah. Um, luckily, it's done. I never have to write that again. Um, but I was always scared of, of writing, and I didn't think um, one I could do it. Two, I think in my own mind, I thought this was a good idea. Um, but would anybody else really want to read it? Is anybody else? I I don't have um, you know, therapist, you know, psychiatrist, MD or anything after my name. I'm, I'm not, um, a professional expert that, that went to school for this stuff is really, you know, is anybody going to do it? And, you know, getting to know Joe and, and, um, uh, how he went about, about the books um, and there, I thought you know what do I have to lose let me just ask him first of all uh, is it a good idea I mean is it something worth you know even trying to go through the process um, is it something that some people would want to read is it a story that they would want to read and this was even before we kind of started clarifying it um, and uh, he and a lot of other people said yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, definitely it, it is and thought about it some more and think well you know in my mind I was still thinking oh my gosh I have to write this and it's going to be going back to English composition and, and commas and semicolons yeah. I really don't want to write <laughs> um, and so I took a few more months and I finally got to the point where it was like you know what um, I have something to say and I hear on the news every day too many people um, burying their children and I just want to say it and so I contacted Joe and I said you know what let's just do it and um, so you that's had how we got started. so you had so it, initially you had some limiting beliefs and whether uh, one yeah. you could actually do it and was it through your consult through a couple of consultations with Joe that he helped reassure you that yes you can definitely yeah. you have a valid story that is worth sharing and that you yeah. in fact could actually do this without you know, knowing and understanding all the grammatical composition needed in order to write a book? <laughs> I, I, again, after now having spent three years and finally finishing my doctoral dissertation, it was like, oh, uh, yeah, I, <laughs> I don't <laughs> want to write. And I'd known, I had known people who had self-published and things like that, and I just thought, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to ask Joe for help. And... Um, we had become friends enough that he said, you know, it's a good idea. If, if you're not a fit for my process, I'm still going to help you. Right. And so that gave me some reassurance. One, that I wasn't going to be alone in, you know, the, this kind of new venture. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And uh, for everyone that's just joining us, uh, I'm speaking with Joe Bovino and his client, Kelly Barber. Conerte, I do not know why I cannot say that name. <laughs> Kelly Barber Conerte. Uh, Kelly launched her book today titled uh, The Grieving Parents Club with the help of Joe. And uh, we just heard just before the show, it's already reached number one bestseller status. Joe Bavino is the founder and CEO of Bestseller and You Publishing, an attorney with over 25 years of experience and author of four Amazon number one bestselling books on dating and relationships. He spent most of his life in New Jersey, Los Angeles, and Miami, but now currently resides in Columbia. And Joe resigned from his law job and decided to write a book. Now he has four number one bestsellers, and he liked to help others who have a great book, a bestseller in them. It's not just about achieving bestseller status, which in some ways it's easy to do nowadays. 
It's about being the best that you can be and sharing it with others. And arguably the best way to share one's wisdom, wit, and great ideas with the world is through a book. However, Joe has, changed, has discovered many people are confused and frustrated with the publishing process. They doubt their own ability to write well and publish a great book. And they think that the writing and publishing process is rigged for celebrities and the well-connected. Now Joe helps people with a three-step process that gets their book idea out of their head and into the world of in a, a non-traditional way that works. First, he positions, structures, and outlines a book. Second, they speak the book into existence. And third, he launches it to bestseller status, making it number one bestseller. So if, if you have any questions you want me to ask Joe or Kelly, just type them in the comments section. As always, make sure you like, love, and share this feed on your Facebook as well as any business pages. And I just want to welcome uh, Connie Rogers, uh, Jason P. Jordan joined us all the way from Italy, and Dean Mosier. So welcome everybody to the show. And like I said, if you have any questions, just type them in the chat. And please like, love, and share this with everyone on your Facebook feed. So Joe, let's get into that uh, the first step of the process. And uh, what was that first step? Step again. <laughs> I, me, I have to go back. Say, I have to go back up into my notes. Oh, position, structure, and outlines the book. So let's talk a little bit about that process in relation to Kelly's book, since she's here. And then uh, you talk a little bit about the structure. Then we'll get Kelly's input on, uh, from the author point of view, uh, how it was going through that process. Okay. I heard Kelly. I think you also mentioned the word doubt, and I have a little. Uh, my new screensaver says, uh, doubt has killed more dreams than failure ever will. And I really believe that's true yeah. in general. It's certainly true when it comes to writing a book, writing and publishing a book. It's, oh, my God, can I do that? I don't know. I had doubt. Maybe you know, all the doubts that people tend to have, I had them too. Kelly had them, and we certainly talked about it. And by the way, in terms of her expertise, she wasn't just a grieving parent. Uh, she was a grieving parent who had this long history of going out one-on-one -on -one with people and just spending lots of her time. She wasn't getting paid for it. She would just do it all the time. So it was like a, I guess it was like almost like a second job. She didn't consider it a job. She just did it. So she was, that's who she already was in terms of, she'd already had that, that kind of thing. So um, anyway, in terms of the first, to answer your question, we had to get past the doubt. But then once we did, uh, the key was to structure it, and once, once we decided it was going to be a nonfiction book, meaning a book that is designed to help people get from where they are to where they want to be, um, we had to figure out uh, who, the, who the players are and then, and then set the story, the main story and then the mini stories. Uh, but I like to look at it this way. Uh, in nonfiction books, the reader is the hero, is the main character that's going on essentially a hero's journey. They have a big problem. They're, they're the, you're a future hero. They have a big problem. They want something. In this case, Kelly's book, they wanted to, to survive and cope and heal after the death of a child. Okay, that's a big problem. But they really want, they don't want to, you know, give up. Uh, they want to move on in a, in a positive, as positive way as they can. So anyway, that's their hero's journey. We were hoping to take them on. We recognized the problem. We identified it up front. And then we set, then, then the, the, the hero, the reader, at some point meets a guide, a, a trustworthy guide or a uh, advisor who has been there, done that, and also can empathize with them. And in this case, uh, Kelly, but not just Kelly, Kelly represented the guide, which we set up as the, the members of the Grieving Parents Club who have been around for a while. They're the ones. Kelly is one representative. She's telling her personal story, but she's not the only one. The, the members of the Grieving Parents Club are the guy. They're the ones, who, if you're a new grieving parent trying to make this journey in your life, trying to get through this, uh, they're the ones you can turn to. And so we set them up, the Grieving Parents Club. That's what we called the book, the Grieving Parents Club. Uh, they're the guide. And uh, so the, the grieving parents have a lot of good uh, wisdom for, for, other, uh, for new members of the club. And we set that up as sort of... Uh, at, toward the end of the book, after we told Kelly's story, we offered essentially, as best we could, a plan of how to get through various stages of grief. As you know, we just advice things that have worked for other grieving parents, for Kelly and others, how to get through various stages, and then some general principles that we found to be helpful. And then finally, an invitation. Uh, I guess the call to action would be: don't just read the book, 
connect with other Great Dream parents through the foundation we're setting up and also the Facebook group, which is in existence now. And even if you just want to reach out to Kelly in direct, you know, directly, that's fine too. Reach out. You're not alone. Connect with other people. Get the help you need. And uh, you know, make some new friends. And uh, and that's what we, that's really how we structured it. You, I hope you, that makes makes sense. That's does, the journey. Yeah. That's the journey. Get the advice. The plan was there. We gave them some general guidelines, and then uh, we said, "Look, uh, reach out." And we tried to paint a picture of what uh, what life can be like if you do, and what it's like if you don't. A little bit. If you don't reach out, it can be a very lonely place uh, so, for a grieving parent. So, Kelly, what was it like going through that process of the planning, the, the structuring? Did you understand uh, when Joe was talking about the hero's journey? Uh, did you understand all of that sort of strategy? Uh, because not everybody gets the hero's journey. Like, you know, in yeah. the marketing world, a lot of people get the hero story, the hero journey. Um, right. So uh, from your perspective, uh, right. you know, this is your the first book that you've written. And uh, so going through that process, could you just talk a little bit about your, your thoughts and, and uh, just the process in general from your perspective? Yeah. He he did his best to um, <laughs> explain simply um, you know, the idea of the hero being the audience and, and all that stuff. And, and at some point it clicked. Um, it was, it, he helped me. I, I kind of ha had a rough idea of what I wanted to achieve, what I wanted to tell. Um, and he kind of took it from there. So, so I, again, it just, um, a complete newbie, um, to the writing, uh, publishing world, unless it's, you know, like research papers yeah. and, and stuff like that. So, um, it, it did take a little while because, um, it, it was new and, um, but as he would explain it, 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 okay, this makes sense. Um, and that his, his gentle reminders that, you know, think about your audience. Um, it's, it's about them. And that really helped because I didn't want it to become, um, a book about Kelly. Right. I really just wanted to, even though it's my story, I, and it's in my voice, um, which we'll talk about when we talk about speaking yeah. the book. Um, it's, it, it's definitely in my voice. Um, I'm more the narrator, if you will. Um, I, I'm just there to, to guide people. I didn't make the rules. I didn't make the solutions. Um, I'm just simply guiding them there. And uh, by telling my story, um, but it, I think it helped. And I think the, the end result is that while it's definitely in my voice and it's my story and it's Lexi's story, the book is not about me. The book is about new grieving parents. Right. Mm -hmm. And I, John, I would just add that hearing Kelly talk about that reminded me. Uh, I guess every book is a little different in the sense, in the way that you approach it. You have to. I, I don't have a set uh, formula where it always has to work a certain way. This many pages for this. This many pages for that. Yeah. No. This is a book about grieving parents. So we had to take the time, even though the book is about the reader and they're trying to help them. They really needed to know. Kelly's story and the story of Lexi. So we did take the time to talk about that relationship because they couldn't under they could you don't really get the the full impact of the advice that's coming from her and other members of the club unless you understand that she really did there. Right. That she really did live this. So we did take the time to tell it, but not just for the purpose of telling it. Uh, we had a goal in mind, but we took we took uh, some chapters and I don't regret it at all. In fact, we got some feedback toward the end of the process from one of uh, Kelly's friends, I believe, who said, I want to know more about Lexi's, uh, it was a specific thing, about this and that, like what her dreams were. I want to know mm -hmm. more about Lexi. Can you, can you tell me more? And so we went back and we did that. Uh, that's what the readers, in this case, the readers, what they wanted that. Right. We, that's the feedback we got. Tell me more about your experience. Tell me more about your, your daughter. They wanted it. So we took the time. Um, and once we got through that, then of course we went on to you know addressing the different stages as best we could with uh, uh, what kind of help they can get from the club and from Kelly. I really like your take on the hero actually being the reader of the story versus a lot of times the hero is actually in the story and you're just the the person viewing uh, or reading about the hero 
and their journey and the author's trying to get it so that you get you resonate with the hero but in your version uh, the reader is actually the hero and they're just um, you know watching somebody's narrating the story uh, that they're actually living right now and that can you can help guide them through the process so i really like your take on uh, the hero's journey that's uh, definitely the first time i've heard that uh, with respect to the strategy and i, I really like that Thanks. Yeah, it was a it was a little bit of a balancing act because I, I I personally believe that Kelly's gone through her own hero's journey, and we told we did tell that story. So she's been through some really rough times. She survived it with a lot of help from other people, and we don't we didn't shy away from the fact that like those people were there for her. They were her guides when she really needed help. Other right. members of the club were here. so, but she went through a journey. She's still on it, but she's she's survived and coped and healed through through many years. So, the, but the fact that she'd already done that, that just set herself up, set her up to be a guide to then for the reader who's, who may be coming in totally fresh. Right. Or like totally clueless, like big problems. Like, I don't know what the hell to do. And so that's, you see what I mean? That's, so the reader becomes a new hero. Hopefully there's a lot of heroes, meaning, meaning that they can overcome their problem and get what they want, which I think is, um, they know they're going to continue grieving. That goes on, but they also want to live their life. They want to, they want to be happy sometimes. They want to, you know, be able to cope with it. They don't want to fall apart. They have other people counting on them, maybe other kids, other family members, and they just can't fall apart. So they, that's that's the journey we're hoping that more people will go on successfully. Very good. And if you guys are just joining us, I'm speaking with Joe Bavino and his client, Kelly Barber Connerte. Uh, Kelly just launched her book. <laughs> You're laughing because I got it right. Connor T. <laughs> Connor T. I was close enough anyway. Kelly just launched her book today titled The Grieving Parents Club with the help of Joe. Joe Bavino is the founder and CEO of Bestseller and New Publishing, an attorney for over 25 years uh, of ex with experience and the author of four Amazon number one bestselling books on the dating and relationship space. Uh, Joe believes that uh, everyone has a, a great book, a bestseller in them. It's not just about achieving bestseller status, which in some ways is easy. It's uh, about being the best that you can be, sharing it with others, and arguably the best way to share one's wi wisdom, wit, and great ideas with the world is through a book. However, Joe's discovered many people are confused and frustrated by the publishing process. They doubt their own ability to write well and publish a great book. And they think that writing and publishing process is rigged for celebrities and the well-connected. Now, Joe helps people with a three-step process that gets their book idea out of their head and into the world in a non-traditional way that really works. First, he positions, structures, and outlines the book. Second, they speak the book into existence. And third, he launches it to bestseller status with the goal of making it a number one bestseller. So if you have any questions or comments, just type them in the comment field, and we'll get them answered during the show. And as always, please like, love, and share this feed on your Facebook, as well as any business pages that you take care of, any groups that you belong to, and uh, leave a message for us. So I uh, just want to welcome uh, D Johnny Mack to the show. Welcome, Johnny, for uh, joining us today. Now, Joe, uh, we just talked about the first step. Now, uh, let's talk about the second step of your three-step process, and you talk about speaking the book into existence. So for those right. who aren't familiar with this strategy, can you get into a little bit more in detail and, and maybe uh, how you use it with your clients? Yes. I think the way to get a book done more quickly and easily than has been possible in the past is to uh, work with someone like me. It can be a friend you could, or you could just dictate it if you want. If you're able to do that, I, I need to work with someone else. But once you have an outline of what you want to say, have a person in, well, like me, I worked with Kelly, and I would ask leading questions to get her to talk about an aspect of the story at the right time. And I would record it. We would do everything through Skype. And I would, re I would use a Skype recorder and we would record it. Uh, we would try to be as efficient as possible. Uh, so we weren't all over the place. Occasionally we did. Uh, <laughs> she's laughing. <laughs> Occasionally we took some detours, but uh, but uh, the more I the more I do this, the better I get at it, at it at keeping it on track. Uh, it isn't about the questions; it's about the answers. And eventually, the uh, what happens is I send the recordings off to get edited, or first transcribed. Then I take out all the questions, unless it's necessary to to know what's going on. But right. I eventually take them all out, and then we have a story, and that story gets edited, uh, and uh, and the book is prepared. So, but in specifically. Uh, 
I worked with Kelly and we had as many sessions, uh, usually about an hour, sometimes an hour and a half, where, we, where I would lead her through the chapter and we would go right through our outline. We had a solid outline and she would tell stories and I would, and when she got to a certain point, I would ask another question and we would go and go and go and we went through the entire book that way. And when it was, that's, that's really the second part of the process is to get the book out of a person's head and, and on to a recording and then eventually all transcribed. She's a very busy woman. She just, as she mentioned earlier, she'd written her dissertation. She didn't want to sit in front of a screen all by herself in some room. And this is a tough subject to, to write about too. Right. Can you imagine sitting there by yourself trying to write this? No. Instead, she got to talk to me. And occasionally I would, occasionally when it got, you know, I lightened it up a little bit, I could make her laugh once in a while. And it, but it's help, helpful to have a person there who can, can, can keep going. That's, that's great stuff. I want to hear it. Maybe she cried and then we, we wait a second and then we yeah. get back. But if you're by yourself, it can be really hard and the, the doubts creep in. So I don't, I think a person who wants to get up in the morning and write their own book by themselves, you know, God bless them. My first book, I did a lot of that. And I know what that's like, uh, all, all due respect. But um, if you want to get a book that you've been sitting on, you've been thinking about for years, you just don't do it, why not? Why not organize your thoughts, or your story, or your, and all your mini stories, and then just speak your book or perform it like it's a performance. Literally perform your book, and then get it out of your head. Then edit it, fix it, and launch it. And so there you go. Your background as a lawyer must have must help you in the process in those leading questions. I like to think it does. I like to think it does. Yes, uh, we're, uh, I'm. I have a. I wrote crazy books about dating and relationships, mostly humor <laughs> books, but I'm an analytical guy <laughs> and uh, I do like to sort of organize things and I'm, yes, it's about the questions, the questions that will get you where you want to go. And I was really concerned. I wanted to get Kelly where she wanted to go with this book. And so, and, I, and we got there. So Kelly, yeah. what were your thoughts uh, when Joe said that, oh, you're not going to have to actually write anything? We're just going to have happy. we're just going to have some conversations, <laughs> and uh, so what was your what was your thoughts about that? And then uh, how did you uh, what did you feel about the the process uh, overall in actually just uh, meeting with Joe on Skype on a regular basis and just telling stories? Uh, first of all, it was when when I really understood that you know speak your book, perform your book. It was a huge wave of relief. <laughs> It's like, oh, thank you. I am so, I am so tired of writing. Um, I, I mean, I teach. I'm a business professor. I'm constantly talking. I'm, I'm on, you know, local media. I, I talk, um, and I think I'm a very effective communicator um, when I speak, and um, much more so than when I write. Because when I speak, I think my personality comes out. And one thing that um, helped was that Joe was very clear. He says, I want this to be in your voice. And so, uh, you know, the written word. Um, but before getting to that point, um, we had the most detailed outline. And we went over and over and revised the outline. And, and you know, as Joe would say, um, you know, if it's not in the outline, it didn't happen. <laughs> So anytime I would say, oh, I just remembered this. He's like, write it down. It, if it's not in the outline, it didn't happen. So that took a while. So by the time we were ready to have the Skype interviews, um, the questions were there. Um, okay. The topics were there. The the stories to, to cue me. Um, it, it was there. And so I think taking the time that we did to really have a strong outline, um, Mm -hmm. And I still, in my mind, if something, if I have to write something down, I'm like, it didn't happen if I don't write it down. <laughs> um, so. That's a good, good life philosophy. It didn't happen if I don't write it down. I had to say yeah. it that way because, John, you know how it is. We're having an interview and uh, it's not in the outline and we're walking through it. She yeah. doesn't say it. She doesn't mention it. It's recorded. Well, then the book gets made. It's just not in there. So uh, <laughs> you can always go back much later and try to stick stuff in. But it's it, it, isn't it better if it if it's in the right place at the right time? <laughs> exactly. Just, so yeah. So so by the time we we started, it was great because it we um, we just had conversations, um, and he could keep me on track because he he had 
you know, we had the detailed outline that we had been over and over and over and over again. And so at that point, it was just him gently nudging me, reminding me, um, tell me about this time or tell me about this story. Tell me about the you know, Power Rangers. Tell me about this. Um, and then my mind and all the memories. And, and so, you know, there was never a case of writer's block. That is impossible. Right. Um, with Joe's process. So what was the time frame for this uh, first speaking your book? Well, we uh, I wanted to mention something else. Uh, uh, I don't know. I give Kelly credit for coming to me because I had written books, humor books about dating relationships. Her book was totally different and she trusted me to, you know, she knew me well enough. We'd been back and forth and she knew I wasn't all about that. I'm not. Yeah. I just happened to I just happened to write about these things. I care about many things and I cared about this book. Uh, and she knew that and and also but I think and, you know she also knew that I can lighten it up every now and then and uh, that's important in a book like this uh, you need you know it's, it gets pretty dark it's a it's a tough subject and yeah. so yeah I don't I try not to be inappropriate <laughs> in lighten it up but, but there were times where you know she knew I could bring her back around and I think that helped um, and to answer your question yeah, John oh, sorry Kelly, Kelly, please no, I was just going to say, um, Joe was very patient. Um, I, when all those memories came flooding back, um, there were times, I, I was miserable. There were sections of the book and memories that I didn't want to remember, and I was miserable, and I would be like, that's it, I'm done. And he would say, you need to take a few days off, a couple weeks off, it's okay, I've got other things to do. So. Um, we took our time. Um, he didn't push me to uh, a firm deadline. We took our time because it was so emotional for me. Um, and so he would give me the time I needed to kind of calm down. Um, and yep. then uh, we'd get back onto it. And so he tried um, with being flexible, um, being very caring um, and understanding the importance of the story, uh, how emotional it was for me, but he did keep me on track. I was going to say and, at um, some point there's got to be a taskmaster, so he's going to yeah. get yeah, you back on. We, so we took our time, would, John. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. No, he would just he would say he would allow me to have you know the time I needed to have my kind of personal pity party and be miserable, <laughs> and then he'd contact me and he's like, "All right, let's get back on it." <laughs> yeah, this was not a book that I wanted to rush. And uh, Kelly wasn't in a big hurry, um, so we just we focused on getting it right. I have another book that I'm working on now that is from start to finish. It's going to be done in, in, in about in two months. Right. Uh, so uh, it could probably be done even faster than that, um, close to a month and a half. But uh, it depends on the book, on the interest. That particular book, they have a deadline. Uh, it has to be out by a certain time. It's a completely different subject, not like this. It's really health and fitness. It's a diet book. Yeah. Um, it's it's going to be great, but uh, I'm, uh, but and, and because of the deadline, there's a, like a tremendous amount of energy put in. Like okay, today, tomorrow, enter interviews day after day after day. No, Kelly and I spread them out like a week at a time. We would have an interview, right? We took we yeah. took weeks. I don't know, probably months. We didn't have to, but I think we spent. I don't remember exactly how long it was on the, on the outline. We really went back and forth on it. And then we, I think the interviews took place like once a week, right? I didn't want to. It was that's enough for for Kelly, right? I mean, come yeah. on, she has to, some of the stuff's heavy. Yeah. So once a week, and then we finally got finished, and then we had to wait for the editing. We actually, we we just we used two editors. We decided to uh, just yeah. because we wanted to. We didn't have to, and uh, and we spent time on the cover. And we really took our time. So, but it all Excellent. depends on the person's needs. It doesn't have to take that long. Like I said, the book that. The book that I'm working on now, I think uh, two months tops, and it'll right. be out. It'll be out very soon. So it's really project specific. It is. I think Great. it should be. Great. If you guys are just joining us, I'm speaking with Joe Bavino and his client, Kelly Barber Connor Tay. I'm going to laugh every time I say that. Connor Tay. Connor T. Yep. Oh, <laughs> see, I need to actually <laughs> phonetically type it up. You're out. fine. Connor T. Uh, Kelly. <laughs> Kelly. Just don't, Kelly. Yes, right. don't don't take offense, but I've had guests on. I've I've brutalized her name every time I said it. So, 
Uh, you're in good company. Uh, Kelly just launched her book today titled The Grieving Parents Club with the help of Joe. Joe Bavino is the founder and CEO of Best Seller New Publishing, an attorney with over 25 years of experience and author of four Amazon number one bestselling books on dating and relationships. Uh, Joe, Joe feels that uh, everyone has a great book inside them, a bestseller in them. Uh, it's not just about achieving bestseller status. In some ways, that's easy. It's about being the best that you can be and sharing it with others. And arguably, the best way to share one's wisdom, wit, and great ideas with the world is through a book. However, Joe discovered that many people are confused about and frustrated about the publishing process. They doubt their own ability to write well and publish a great book, and they think that writing and publishing process is rigged for celebrities and the well-connected. Now Joe helps people with a three-step process that gets their book out, idea out of their head and into the world in a non-traditional way that really works. First, he positions, structures, and outlines the book. Second, they speak the book into existence. And third, he launches it to bestseller status with the goal of making it a number one bestseller. So if you have any questions or comments, just type them in the comment field and we'll get them answered uh, during the show. And as always, please like, love, and share this video on your Facebook feed. And I just want to welcome... Uh, Joe Cortana to the show and Joe says hi everybody and uh, as mentioned uh, definitely like and love and share this so um, Joe and Kelly we're on uh, stage number three awesome step three which is launching to a bestseller status which is today which is today so we're doing right right now and so Joe walk us through your typical process of, of what you go through leading up to launch day in preparation and then what you what you do on launch day okay and before I just preface it this way uh, when I wrote my first book I did it the long hard way it took forever uh, I'm very proud of my first book though and uh, when I launched it I w I so wanted it to be an uh, Amazon bestseller I and more and uh, I had a partner at the time we hired a a uh, Amazon launch consultant. We paid her uh, $4,000, I recall, hmm. uh, just to launch the book, just to do that. And uh, she delegated, I'm not trying to knock her, I'm not going to mention any names, but she delegated the project to someone else she had there. And anyway, long story short, the book wasn't properly category categorized on Amazon. It wasn't categorized at all. Yeah, <laughs> it, yeah I know. I see John, John knows. He, it, he's laughing because it, it, it went out. We were launching the print version, not the ebook. We launched the print version. It went out under the books category. There were no <laughs> categories at all chosen. So I was competing against every single the book, book on, on Amazon. Amazon. Oh yes. I put all this effort into it all four years of my life. I loved this book. I was so proud of it. And I just knew it should it would do well. We had a party. We spent money. An Amazon party was in Hollywood. I have pictures. It's a great party. Uh, people were buying it at the event. Uh, the book did, we sold tons. Anyway, because it wasn't properly categorized, the best the book could do was it was it was recognized as number one on the movers and shakers list, which I don't even know if Amazon has anymore. <laughs> but it didn't become a bestseller in any category because it wasn't in a category. I think it got up to number two hundred in books, John. Yeah. Overall, like it, it could have made it. It almost made it to bestseller. It was the top ten. I mean, of all books, because we got, we sold it, but it didn't. And so I was I was heartbroken. <laughs> Uh, I just, after all that time, and especially paying, I just thought, oh my God, I didn't make it. My book's not a bestseller. Um, I know that's, maybe that doesn't sound great, uh, but I, um, it really, uh, it, I almost didn't want to write again. I was so upset, and I almost didn't. Uh, later on, I learned, uh, to your question, John, um, things have to be done a certain way. You have to properly categorize your book when you launch it. Not just the book. You, you, you categorize the book itself, the paperback. And if you have an ebook version, you categorize that too on Kindle. Mm -hmm. yeah. It has to be in the correct categories. You shouldn't mm -hmm. have to launch on e against every book to get recognized no. on Kindle or on Amazon. It, you, they're all in categories for a reason. You can you can set those you can set those categories. You can also set keywords that help people find your book. Um, those have to be done right. And then you have to, um, so that was really important. Uh, I learned how to do that. And then I learned the importance of having a network of people who will help you when you're ready to launch a book by buying it on that particular day. Because the way you get to become a bestseller is really on Amazon is the number of sales you get in a 24 hour period. So you want on that day, the day you choose, your book better be properly categorized, better look good, better have the right keywords, 
And you better have a network of people who are willing to buy your book on that day. Now, what I do, and I'm not the only one that do this, does this, John. I know you do as well, and others. On the day that you're going to launch the ebook version, you set the price low. In this case, I set it for 99 cents. It'll be changed tomorrow. Yeah. It was 9.99 before. This helps people who want to help you. Maybe they don't care about the subject. Maybe they just want to help you. That's okay. Well, on your lunch day, you don't mind that help. Uh, so that's really the process, and I found. Uh, I was able to relaunch my first book later uh, to bestseller status. It also won awards, proud to say, my first book. Uh, Global uh, a Gold Medal Award for Humor. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. Yes. Yes. I'm no comedian. That's, that's clear. But, uh, but I, I can be funny at times. Um, so that book did really well. And I launched all my books at number one. And now I'm doing it for clients. And Kelly's book just hit number one in one of the three Kindle categories. We're launching it as a Kindle book right now. We're focusing on that. And uh, it's now a number one bestseller in one of the categories. Uh, I also placed it uh, in, on Amazon sites internationally, Germany, Australia, Canada, under and also properly categorized. And I'm hoping that we can reach number one in one of those countries too. It's, uh, Kelly is not con overly concerned about this. Uh, I'm talking about the process because we're here to talk about the process. But yeah. Kelly's, Kelly, I'm sure she's happy that it's a bestseller, but... Um, She's just trying to get the word out, and so am I. This is one way that her book can get noticed, and that's why it matters. I'm hoping that it gets noticed. I'm hoping that it helps people. So if I sound a little, I get a little excited about the process, but uh, it's just about getting noticed. And I do think that when you have a book and you can say it's a number one bestseller, it does lend authority to the book and to the person who wrote yes, it. If exactly. she goes on TV, she goes on TV to talk about it, and I hope she will. Uh, they'll say Kelly number one best selling book blah 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 people oh number one best selling book what does she have to say exactly that's that's one of the reasons it, you want it it just adds a lot more I hate to say the word credibility or authority to uh, the author on the subject matter but it really uh, elevates their position so if they have a message that they're trying to share with the world it's really going to elevate themselves and get that message heard uh, potentially by a lot more people which is the purpose of Kelly's book so what yes. specific things did you do today, Joe? I know today is launch day. Um, so what is your normal process? Yes. I have a, I'm a member of some groups. I have a group of my own. I have a bestseller in you university page. Uh, I also have um, I'm a member of some other groups. I have um, contacts. And so normally, normally, not today, but normally, I would go to my groups and I'd say, "Hey, I've got a book. Would you please support me?" And 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 it's 99 cents today. My ebook. Uh, I wanted to be number one. You know, hey, help me out. Yeah. And uh, oftentimes the people that I go to in these groups do because I do the same for them. It's a it, there's a lot of karma there. I've helped a lot of other authors um, who've launched their books to to become best-selling authors, and uh, they know that I've been there for them. And so. Uh, when I have a, when I've had my own books, they've been there for me, and now that with Kelly's uh, with Kelly's book, they're also there. So yeah, so it's about what I normally do is just go out and spread the word. Uh, people are very busy with their lives, uh, and they may not notice if they're not like pinged on Facebook or, or whatever it is. Now today, on this launch, I decided to do something differently, and I still I'm still reaching out, but I'm also spending time with you, John, on this show. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that, by the way. Oh, that's what I, I, I'm here. This is, I love, I was on, you know, once for one of my books. I'm thrilled to be able to do it, and I'm really appreciative. And I think it's particularly important, this approach, where somebody, when I, have, when I can have Kelly on to tell her story, and people can get a sense of it personally, it's much better than me out sending emails and, and social media, hey, here's a new book, here's the book cover. You get the chance, people get a chance to hear from Kelly directly. So that's what I've been doing today. And we're already number one in one category. And so, yeah. Um, so thank you, John. And definitely uh, that video is still on Facebook. And you can use link to that video and say, hey, you know, help support this book. And here's uh, meet the author, hear her story. Um, you know, it may compel people to, uh, to go ahead and buy the book. So, Kelly, what were your thoughts on today's process? <laughs> um, honestly, I, I gave him the date. <laughs> yeah, that's all she did. She's been really busy with her dissertation. No, I mean, I mean, what, almost nothing. Uh, <laughs> okay, so so tell us about today. I know you were busy this morning, but uh, so uh, do you have any input with respect to uh, Joe's launching today? 
No. Just how it went. I he has had he has had success. I said I asked him. I said, "Could we could we do this by Lexi's birthday?" Yes. Um and to, you know, today is is Lexi's 27th birthday and um so a, a very poignant um date for me and and um uh he's like, "Oh yeah." So, um <laughs> He is the expert. I he knows what he's doing. I have, I have had um, nothing but exceptional um, excellence all along the way. And he said, "Nope, we're going to make your book number one bestseller." And I'm like, "Okay, you just tell me when, <laughs> where, what to do." Um, and uh, it works. I said that and, we were still in the editing process. She hadn't seen the book yet. We were still, <laughs> we were still yeah. preparing it. Uh, don't worry. We'll get it done. She goes, look, and we just this. This is the date. Can you make it? Oh yeah. And uh, the truth is, we could have. We got done well in advance. We could have launched this book a month ago. Right. Uh, but we've been waiting because we wanted this as a special day. Uh, so yeah, that's how it worked. Excellent. And oh, oh John, yeah. John, it's important to people realize. I didn't say Kelly, you can't help me uh, with the <laughs> launch. I didn't say that at no. all. I, no. I, she was very busy. In fact, if she wasn't so busy, I probably would have been saying, Kelly, can you send out messages to your friends? And hey, can you? No. She was at a dissertation. She's very busy. Yeah. And frankly, it's not necessary. So, and, uh, yeah. and then joining us on uh, this, mor this morning's live cast, I know there was a lot of people coming in and out uh, during the two and a half hours that we were on. I think we peaked out at 20 some viewers at one point in time, but there are always people coming in and out. So hopefully that uh, two and a half hours helped in today's launch in uh, getting the message out. But that video is going to will remain there. So definitely you have that video. You can download that video uh, for future references and, you know, posting it in uh, your Facebook group, Kelly. Maybe you want to post it in there and yes. to help tell your story a little bit more yes. and uh, using it to help uh, potentially sell some more books today and hopefully get you the bestseller in the other two categories. Yes, that's important to me. <laughs> Excellent. I just have to say, as you know, as as somebody, um, I, I kind of feel good. I kind of feel important. You know, Joe's first <laughs> non non Joe um, one. Non Joe book. Non Joe. <laughs> <laughs> if um, I, yeah, you know, I could have written it, but but why? I have been through every single step of the process. The basics of his three-step process, I do, I really believe, would work for any topic, any person. Um, it's with the you know a positioning it right, but he knows what he's doing, and he made it so incredibly easy for me. All I had to do was talk. All I had to do was have a conversation with a friend. Yeah, and um, yeah. that. That helps. That helps the creative process. That helps get these ideas out of your head, um, uh, out into the world where they need to be. I, I find I find that process uh, so much easier as well. Not just for telling a story for a book, but uh, when I have a lot of I I generally have a lot of business ideas and being able to actually talk to somebody about those business ideas instead of just writing them down it's much more effective i just want to uh, acknowledge joe has a couple comments in here joe says kudos to you for all your treatment on, uh, of both the subject and the topic the sensitive joe bovino taps that side of his client's story <laughs> thanks for your honesty and insight and he said well done uh well said and well done joe bovino uh, excellent. I want to thank you guys for joining me on today's show. That's uh, our time is up again. It, it just flies by. It goes so fast. Mm -hmm. But I uh, definitely want to thank both of you for joining me on today's show. And uh, if anyone has any specific questions for Joe, uh, Joe, I'll just get you to, to post your your, con your contact information in the comments. So anybody that okay. watches this after the fact, if they want to reach out to you, maybe they want to go through this process with you, uh, then they can connect with you. And as always, make sure you like, love, and share this video on all of your Facebook feeds. And I just want to thank Joe and Kelly again for being on the show. And I look forward to catching up with you guys again real soon. Thanks, John. Thanks so much, John. And everyone, Thanks, else, Kelly. everyone else, just stay tuned for just a second, and I'll be back with closing remarks. 
Well, thanks for joining me on today's John A. McCabe Show, where we work with entrepreneurs, business owners, authors, experts, and speakers, get seen, get heard, get noticed anywhere, anytime, on any device. Now, also known as the Authority Acceleration Blueprint. Now, if you're someone who's looking to take your business to the next level and want to get some coaching advice, why not apply to be a guest on today's show? Now, for most entrepreneurs, we want to create a life of our own, create our own path and do what we can to reach our own desired outcome, which is generally freedom, freedom to choose what we want to do, when we want to do it, and with whom we want to do it, a life that's full of options and choices where we worry less about money and more about the quality of time that we spend with others. Now, a great way to make that happen is to leverage other people's knowledge, time, and skill sets. Step one to reaching our fr freedom life is to realize that you can't do it alone. Working with a coach or being involved in masterminds is a great way for entrepreneurs to move their business forward. Now, a coach can help you shorten the time frame to get you from where you are to where you want to be, while being part of a mastermind is meant to bring entrepreneurs together, all with the goal of helping each other move forward with their business. Now, the second step to creating the life you envision for yourself as an entrepreneur is to implement systems into your business so you can streamline your operations, leverage systems, and free up your time to focus on your family, having fun, and the highest leverage activities in your business. You know, the activities that get you the biggest return on your time invested, the ones that truly make you money. Now, sometimes we just don't know what systems we need, how to implement those systems, or even have the time to find out what is needed. Now, working with a coach or consultant that understands, uses, and specializes in systems that can streamline your operations can help save you time, aggravation, and make you a lot more money. Now, for example, having a system or strategy that allows you to leverage just 15 hours of your time into enough repurposed content to get you seen, get you heard, get you noticed anywhere, anytime, on any device is a great example of leverage. Now, just imagine a system where you invest just 15 hours of your time and the end result is you're a number one best-selling author you have enough content that's going to get you seen get you heard get you noticed anywhere anytime on any device you have a successful podcast now it's automatically attracting more attention giving you giving more value and generating more leads which enables you to attract an abundance of paying customers now this is also known as the authority acceleration blueprint now to find out more about the Authority Acceleration Blueprint coaching program or mastermind, then contact me via my website at johnamccabe.com or connect with me through my show's Facebook page. Now again, thank you for joining us on today's show and I look forward to seeing you on tomorrow's show when I have another great guest on discussing their business and accelerating their authority. So have yourself an amazing day and I look forward to seeing you again real soon.